Greetings, everyone, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What another beautiful day it is. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you chose to spend another portion of your time with me today. This one may be a little bit longer because there are some important things to cover to fully help us understand what's going on. And there is a lot going on. All right, I did get my heart square done. I'm so excited. I went back and re Well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. All right, should we get started today? Thank you again so much for tuning in. And if you're new to my channel, we welcome you into our family. We are going through the Bible in a year, and what a glorious blessing it has been. We have all grown so much in these past 18 weeks. Soon, we are finishing up week 19. Isn't that phenomenal? Oh, it's fantastic. All right, today... We read chapters 15 through 18, tomorrow, 1 Kings 19 through 22. Now, I did make a little boo-boo in the drop-down box below, which has been corrected. Uh, one of you, I can't remember who, said, wait a minute, is this right? Uh, and thank you for pointing that out to me. It said Psalms, but... I forgot to back up and erase and take out that little Psalms piece. So it is 19 through 22 tomorrow. And that will be the end of 1 Kings. Now our trivia question today is how many people did Jesus personally raise from the dead? Now that will be covered actually in our study today. And the answer, named the great-grandmother of David for yesterday, was Ruth. And it's, um, it's just been such a great study. I just, I'm overwhelmed sometimes as I study. All right, in 1 Kings, what we studied today, we saw how different kings arose that were very evil. And then how a righteous king that followed God's commandments like David and did great things of cleaning up the idols and taking care of all that mess. Well, this goes back and forth, back and forth. And I want to point out some lessons that we can learn. Sin is never static. It grows, it expands, and contaminates all it touches. Now, I know this to be true on a personal note. I was abused sexually as a child, and the effects of that trickled down for a couple generations, and it was not good until finally someone broke the chain and stood up for what was right and took up that banner again for Christ to get sin out of the camp of the family. No person or nation, even the nation of Israel, is immune to its destructive nature. Jesus entered a culture that continued to bear the marks of the impact and spread of sin. We are not able to rid ourselves from the effects of sin. Into this broken, broken world, Jesus ushered in a new kingdom marked by his perfect rule and reign. The key fact, submission to Jesus breaks the cycle of sin and provides the hope and peace no human king could ever bring. And that's true to this day. We seem to have good presidents rise up and bad presidents rise up. And we see what direction the country go goes through depending on who's in that office. Now, we want to touch some on Elijah because we're going to be continuing and picking up Elijah's ministry in 2 Kings. Let me grab me a tissue here. Oh, excuse me. We went out for a walk today, and thankfully, we didn't have many mosquitoes buzzing around us like yesterday. I got a couple good welts here, but um, 
Wow, just my allergy ch chooses to do what it's going to do. So I apologize when I have to stop and take care of that. All right, let's talk about Elijah, the bread of life. Elijah's action in chapter 17 are a demonstration of the power of God to provide for people and overcome the disastrous effects of sin and death. Through power given to him by God, Elijah multiplied a small amount of flour and oil in order to provide bread for the widow and her son for many days. God also worked through Elijah to bring the widow's son back to life after he became sick and died. These miracles marked Elijah as God's appointed messenger at this stage in history. However, Elijah's two miracles recounted in this text have additional significance. They prefigure the person and work of Jesus Christ. Jesus, as God's son and appointed messenger, was, person per was personally able to turn a meager meal into a feast for multitudes. The feeding of the 5,000 boldly proclaimed that Jesus was capable of abundantly providing for people. Jesus' provision was not limited to mere physical bread, though. He claimed to be the true bread from heaven sent to provide for all those who would feast on him. Isn't that great? Jesus also performed other miracles, proving him to be God in the flesh and one who possessed ultimate power over sin and death. Like Elijah, Jesus brought the dead son of a widow back to life. Seeing the woman and having compassion on her, Jesus spoke to the son and he sat up and began to speak. Jesus said that acts like these demonstrated that he was the Messiah who would bring healing and restoration to those broken by sin's consequences. Then we have the death of Jesus' friends, Lazarus, provided another opportunity for him to demonstrate the power he possessed. Unlike the widow's son, Lazarus had been dead for several days and his body had been wrapped in funeral linens and placed in a tomb. Jesus prayed to the Father, then spoke to the corpse, calling it to life. Jesus attested to the fact that rising Lazarus served as a testimony to the glory of God. And Jesus also raised a young dead girl. Soon this glory was seen in a far greater resurrection, that of Jesus himself. The power of God over Satan, sin, and death was fully demonstrated by Christ's victorious emergence from the grave. His resurrected life would serve as first fruits of the resurrection promise to all those who place their faith in him. By God's power, all those longing for vision and broken by death can be restored to new life now and forevermore. And then we read where turning hearts to God, Elijah, the confrontation between Elijah and the prophets of Baal and Mount Carmel is one of the most well-known story in the book of Kings. Elijah boldly confronted the pagan worship that not only filled the surrounding nations, but also became rampant among the people of God. While well, he mocked the inability of the pagan gods to prove their power by consuming the offering on the altar. And seemingly, he stacked the odds against his God. However, in a mighty power of display, the Lord consumed not only the sacrificial offerings, but also the wood, the stones, and the water that Elijah had poured on the altar. And then we read after this miraculous episode, threatened by Jezebel and feeling for his, fearing for his life, Elijah ran into the desert wanting to end it all. His mountaintop testimony to the glory of God has not turned the hearts of people back to God or halted the nation's headlong course toward destruction, a course that even great leaders in the nation's history had seemed powerless to stop. Now, God will come to Elijah in a small, still voice and comfort him in his depression. And... In spite of the nation's failure to return to God in a meaningful way, God continued to display his glorious might throughout history. Each time God showed, you know, way back in Egypt, his mighty power, and God just was there, and 
he turned hearts back to worship him. When humans turn from their sin and turn to Christ, they display the fact that God has replaced their hearts of stone with soft and pliable hearts. These new hearts, pulsating with life given by the power of God, are drawn to the awe-inspiring glory of God. I like that. Turn to Christ. They display the fact that God has replaced their hearts of stone with soft and pliable hearts. How often do we have our hearts become like stone and but we go to the Bible and it, they become soft and pliable because we are reminded of the power of God. God will never forsake us. He will never leave us. Throughout the history of First Kings, God was there with the righteous kings and the evil kings were utterly destroyed. So let's follow God and his teachings. And I can't wait to get into the further um, ministry of Elijah when we start in Second Kings. So tomorrow, First Kings 19 through 22, we'll be winding that up. Uh, let's turn hearts to God. I hope you've enjoyed that devotional today as I was studying through all the good and evil kings and I'm thinking, wow, I understand now. I have a better understanding of first kings and the divided kingdom and what that was all about. And if we can grow as we go along in our studies and get things straightened out in our minds like, okay, what's going on? Why is it going on? How is this going to be taken care of? Um, it just opens a whole new realm of spiritual guidance that the Spirit gives to us as we study through God's Word. And that's a wonderful place to be. All right, everyone. I think that's it for today. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's study. And after tomorrow, we will have completed week 19. All right. Remember my square and... I said, ah, uh, I had to put this aside where well, I went back. I really rewatched the video and I saw where I got mixed up and I was successful. Let me grab one of my other squares. I'll just grab this one. Okay, this one here is made with a chain one in between. Okay. And I really like that. It turned out nice. But this heart square, she didn't have you doing any chain ones between. You can, it's just preference. And I wanted to show you the difference in just adding a chain one, how it makes it a little bit bigger. So here is my heart square. What do you think? Didn't it turn out nice? I really, really like that. I really like this pattern because when I got done, I only had to sew in this middle and then later I will be sewing this in. Now, the difference is, I'm gonna hold these together. See how this one is a little bit bigger? It's because of the chain one spaces. So this was my kind of play with attempt and I'm gonna make my other ones with the chain one between so they'll be as big as this one. But um, yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. I went, finally, I did it. I conquered it. So, you know, we can apply this to many things in our life. If, you, if you're tired and you're just not getting it and you're frustrated, you know, just put it aside. You know, put it aside. Just take a deep breath. Blow in and out. Say, okay, I'm going to come back to this tomorrow and I will conquer this. I've had a couple things that I just had to say. I can't conquer this. I just don't get it. But for the most part, if we stick with it, we can figure it out. And if we stick with God's word and we really start studying to show ourselves approved, we'll start getting it. And once you start getting it, you just can't help but want to get it more and more and more and have it just fill you up with all this wisdom and knowledge. Uh, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? All right, everyone, that's it for today. This is Suzanne and God Crochet and Chatter, and I hope you have a great evening. Thank you so much for keeping me on my toes. I really do appreciate that. I try to be as correct as I can be on things, but sometimes a little thing gets away from me. 
But I have you watching out for me, right? All right, everyone. Lord willing, I will see you back tomorrow on God Crochet and Chatter. Bye-bye, everyone.